What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and to another Overwatch League news video. This is going to be a quick one. I wasn't expecting to make any videos today, but then the Gladiators come out and say that they have parted ways with Big Goose and Shaz as well as Bishu and Jaru. I think the latter two weren't really too surprising because neither of them were really being utilized, but Big Goose and Shaz is a bit more on the shocking side. Looking at it from the point of view of all three years of them being on this team, I would say Big Goose and Shaz have been one of the most consistent support duos. Maybe this year been a little bit different, but just reasonably speaking, talking about their entire career combined on the Gladiators, they've consistently been like a A or high B tier support duo. Shaz in particular has been extremely consistent for them. I think his Ana play has been really good. He's had some issues with the Zen play here and there, but still pretty clean overall. And Big Goose, I think is a little bit different. I think him leaving the team was a bit more understandable. I feel like his play has been declining over the last couple of years, especially this year in particular. I thought he wasn't very good at all. Shaz, they definitely could have held on to, I feel like, just because he's been one of the best Western flex supports since he joined the league, essentially. And I think this year in particular, you could really make the argument he was the best flex support in the Western scene. But then again, it might not have totally been up to them. For all we know, the Gladiators may have just not wanted Chaz anymore. Maybe they want to move on from this Finnish duo once and for all and start off fresh. And you know, I think that's completely understandable considering the fact that the Glads have not reached their goal of winning a championship these past three years. They always keep falling short, so maybe they figured it's time to change it up and see if it makes a difference. Well, it would seem as I'm recording this, Big Goose has actually announced that he is retiring from Pro Overwatch as a player at least. He doesn't know what his future has in store for him, he's going to take some time to think about it, but for now he's done being a player. So that probably helps explain why the Gladiators parted ways with him in particular. As to why they parted ways with Jazz, I'm not too sure. He doesn't know what his future is going to be yet, he might still play, he might not, we'll have to see. All I know is if Jazz does still want to play, he's going to find a new home somewhere because he's way too talented not to find a new home but he also could end up retiring. That would be very sad, but it's definitely a possibility depending on what he ends up wanting to do with his life from here. Now the question we have to ask ourselves though is where do the Gladiators as well as Big Goose and Shaz go from here? So starting with the Gladiators, I would say they likely have their eyes set on a specific support duo, or maybe they have someone in mind from Korean contenders, and then maybe like North American contender, some sort of combination, whatever it may be. d -Pay's probably been going really, really hard on the scouting ever since the offseason started for his team. Or maybe the Gladiators are looking to make a blockbuster trade happen, or trades for that matter. If any of you recall, the Gladiators made two blockbuster trades happen during the offseason last year. For one, they traded for space with the LA Valiant, and they also traded to K over to the fuel to get OG. And I mean, when you think about it, the Gladiators historically have liked to make trades happen throughout the years. Back in Season 1, they made a big trade for Fissure. They also did a minor trade by getting Silk Thread from the Valiant. Then in Season 2, they traded Bishu for some money to the charge. These guys love to do trades, so I would not be surprised at all if they make a big-time trade happen to get some supports in there. You always know a team like the Boston Uprising, let's say, is down to do some business, so maybe they'd like to sell Myungbong to the Gladiators, let's say. Maybe that could happen. Now, of course, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I feel like it's definitely on the table. There's a chance the Gladiators make some sort of big trade happen because they love to do this type of stuff. As for what Big Goose and Shaz want to do next, well, I think that's entirely up to them. As we already established, Big Goose has retired as a player, so being a player for a different team is off the table, but maybe he'll be a coach or like a manager someday, perhaps. With Shaz, though, I really don't know what he wants to do because he's still undecided. If he decides to play, I'm sure he could find a new home somewhere because, in my opinion, he was arguably the best Western flex support in the league last year. So I'm sure somebody, at the very least, would give him a trial. Maybe he would have to end up proving himself in contenders again. I highly, highly doubt that. But hey, it's just a thought. I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but I'm very curious to find out and super excited for that matter. Now let's talk just quickly about both Jaru and Bishu. So like I said earlier, both of them leaving, not much of a shocker. They were on the bench pretty much the entire season. I think early on Jaru had a chance to prove himself because I believe at the beginning of the season he was one of only three DPS players on the roster, but he really didn't get that much playtime. He only came in for specific maps. And then before you know it, suddenly he's not playing at all anymore. And then they replaced him with Kevster because he can base basically do everything he did, but a lot better. Where Jaru ends up going from here is kind of up in the air, I would say, because he really didn't get much of a chance to prove himself on the Overwatch League stage. Perhaps he could find a new team and really just kick butt in tryouts for a certain team, but I think in all likelihood, he probably ends up having to reprove himself in contenders. Maybe he doesn't want to be stuck on a bench role and he wants to show he's capable of being a starter, so we'll have to see where his story goes from here. Bishu, on the other hand, already has a clear-cut path in front of him, as he announced on his Twitter that he wants to try and be either a manager of some type or he 
wants to try coaching. He's done being a player. He's officially retired, at least for the time being. So that's where he's going to go from here. It's really sad, but hey, what can you do? He really didn't have much going for him as a player at this point, I feel, because he hasn't really played much in the last two years, only a couple of maps, really. He's basically just there to provide team spirit for the Gladiators, so I think it's good that he's moving on. Again, it's sad because I have loved watching him over the years, but I think this is for the best. And I mean, hey, it's not like he's going anywhere. He's still technically going to be around the competitive Overwatch scene, just in a different role than we're used to seeing him in. Regardless, though, I'm still very sad about all of this because Bishu is such an amazing guy. I loved watching him on stage. I loved the overwhelming energy and positivity he always brought. It was such an amazing thing. One of the most positive players of all time, right up there with, like, Mickey, for sure. I really wanted to thank Bishu for all that he's done. He was such an amazing guy and player to watch, and I'm just so thankful for all of the amazing years he's provided in this Overwatch League family, and hopefully more are to come in the future. So, Gladiators fans, let me know how you're feeling about all of this down in the comment section. I'm sure it's really sad to see Big Goose, Shaz, and Bishu go in particular because they have been around in this family for three years, so it's going to be really sad for all of you to say goodbye to them, I would assume, but just let me know how you're feeling down in the comments section about where you think your team could go from here. And before we transition to the ending, I just wanted to go over a couple of other quick tidbits of news that happened recently. So for one, the Boston Uprising have hired a new head coach. So Boston want to give Lori a chance, and he is a coach who comes from WGS Phoenix, which is a Korean contender team. I personally don't know all that much about the guy, but I've heard a lot of good things about him. A bunch of people really think he's going to make for a great Overwatch League coach, and that's a great sign if you're a Boston fan. Oh, and if you're wondering what happened to Mineral, he is now moving over to a management position, I believe, so he's still going to be affiliated with Boston, just not in a coaching role anymore. So my honest opinion on this signing is, I really like it. I think this was the right thing to do. Mineral really wasn't cutting it. He doesn't have a great track record as a head coach, and it has continued into 2020, and I think bringing and Lori just gives you a new philosophy on how to play the game, and he's well-respected within the community. And if you're a Boston fan, I think more changes are definitely on the horizon, whether he ends up bringing in some of the people he coached, or maybe some Uprising Academy players end up in there. I think we are inbound to see a lot more roster changes happen if you're the Boston Uprising. And finally, to wrap up some of the off-season news I got for you in this video, the Guangzhou Charge also announced some coaching changes as they are parting ways with head coach Jin, as well as assistant coaches Tai Dola and Sung Wu. All of the these guys have been around since the beginning of the Guangzhou Chargers existence, so I'm interested to see where the charge go from here. I think some people will argue that they like these guys and it's really sad to see them go, but then there's others who have been calling for their heads. I know a lot of people in my Discord community in particular have not liked Jin, and I kind of agree. I think that he hasn't really been doing all that great with some of his decision making. I know the charge did really well this year, but some of his philosophies and decisions overall were very questionable. Take some of his decision making in the AP pack playoffs, for example. It was a real head scratcher to not see Eileen touch the stage very much because he is not just really good at Sombro, but he's also a really good Reaper player, and yet he found himself on the bench anyway, which was very, very strange. Of course, I'm just a fan. I don't know any better. I don't know what works for that team, but just from a fan perspective, it looked like they made the wrong decision. I think it's a good idea to move on and get some new coaches. I think it could make a difference in the long run when it comes to being competitive and trying to go for a championship. I'm expecting the charge to make some other roster decisions as well besides getting some new coaches because Nero has been hinting that he's probably not going to be on the charge. I mean, he literally said, and so it begins when the coaches left. So I feel like that might mean he's leaving too. And who knows what else could happen? They probably could use a new main tank and maybe get some other backups. A lot of stuff's going to be happening for the charge and it'll be very interesting to see what they do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this news video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like button if you did and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of my future Overwatch League news videos. And as always, thanks so much for watching this content. I really do appreciate your support. And until next time, this is ATP signing out. Peace.